Hello everyone, my name is Donna Curry and I'm the Digital Subscription Technology Analyst with DPI. I'm currently the Product Manager for EBSCO and Britannica and this video is a recap of what was covered at NC Bold. Um, so if you missed it at NC Bold, um, here it is, but it's also an introduction to um, EBSCO. I did separate the session into two different videos, so if you want to go back and learn about Britannica, that's in a separate video, um, but this video is going to focus on EBSCO and how to access it. And it's getting started for anyone who is new, a refresher for anyone who may have used it in the past, but this session will focus on EBSCO and how to access those resources. So thank you for joining me and I'm going to turn my camera off because it does help when we are maneuvering through the different um, sites and it makes it just a little bit faster. But thank you for joining me today. So we are going to talk about and the session that was covered at NC Bold was We've Got It All and You Can Too. Um, in order to access this site, you are going to need to go to bit.ly slash NC Bold in all caps, the number one, D. Curry 2023. Um, you'll notice that I do have the link to this presentation on just about every single slide. Like I said, and if you didn't catch the Britannica part, I'm going to skip it this time. But if you want to go back and look at that video, I do have that accessible to you as well. So what we're going to do in this particular session is we're going to explore, find, and share resources from the largest digital subscription in North Carolina. North Carolina does provide subscriptions to EBSCO and Britannica to you. They're um, the state page for them, and they're accessible to you just for no additional charge. So in this session, which I think we will focus on EBSCO, I'm going to show you how to search for ebooks. There's an additional encyclopedia in here. We'll search for magazines, journals. Um, I'll show you research databases and more. But the focus today will be on ebooks and on magazines. We'll focus on the other in a little bit, um, in a little while, in some different webinars that will be offered to you. In order to access these resources, you will need to be able to log into NC Ed Cloud. So if you don't have access to that information right now, you might want to um, stop this video and make sure you can log in. So in the previous video, I did show you the Britannica part, and we started with the toolkit or looked at the toolkit for just a little bit and how to access these resources. So we're going to skip the Britannica part for this video, and we're going to start with the toolkit as it applies to um, EBSCO. How do you access these digital subscriptions? Well, in order to access any of the EBSCO resources, you do have to be logged into NC Ed Cloud. Students who are in younger grades, in kindergarten through fifth grade, they can log in with the QR code if your district opts into that. So if you are trying to follow the just directions to print QR codes and you don't see what is shown on the screen, that means your district has not opted in. And these are directions for them to opt in. Someone in leadership would have to opt in for your district. Once they have opted in, then these options will work, and your district is the authority on whether they allow QR codes to be logged in with or not. Even if students share a direct link with students, so student, and they put it in their learning management system, those students still have to be logged into NC Ed Club to access those first. The first time you access NC Ed Club, you will have to claim your account. So if your students have trouble doing that, um, these are directions to help you with that. And what if someone works with your students on a daily basis, such as a student intern, or maybe there's a contract person who works with your students, they can be granted access to these resources with a non-payroll account or an NC Ed sponsored account. Um, the person who manages NC Ed Cloud for your district should be able to help you with that. However, your district is the authority on who they allow to have access to these resources, and that would be on the district level. But if they need help with that, please have them reach out to me, and I'll be happy to get in touch with them. Like I said, I'm going to skip the Britannica part because that was in a previous video. We're going to skip now to the toolkit. Um, when students log into EBSCO, their screen does not look like your screen. Um, so it's important for you to know what their screen looks like and what databases they have access to. Um, the toolkit is found on the NC Ed Cloud home screen. It does look like this. I've linked it here as well. It's just um, a Canvas course that has information for you and resources. So you'll see this icon for Resource Toolkit on the NC Ed Cloud home screen. What we're going to focus on today are grade bands, and um, I'm going to show you how to access those screenshots and how to access those, the spreadsheet of what students see. Because your students do not see what you see, and you're going to need to make sure you pull, if you are pulling resources for them, that you get it from a database that they can see. I did link the two things that we're going to focus on here, but I know sometimes um, you lose presentations and you forget they, where they are. So I'm going to show you how to actually maneuver this 
maneuver to this from the um, NC Ed Cloud screen. So when you are in NC um, Ed Cloud, towards the bottom, because remember this is an alphabetical order, you will see the resource toolkit for EBSCO and Britannica. So just click on that at the bottom. Um, I cannot take credit for this website. I'm Cynthia Sartain, who managed this platform before me. She um, gathered all of these resources and materials, so I um, cannot take credit for that. There's a wealth of information in here. We're just going to focus on a very small part. So once you click on the icon from NC Cloud, you're going to click on Educators. And then from Educators, you're going to see that there's some tutorials and guides. So after we talk today, if you want to learn more about Explorer or if you want to learn more about Publication Finder, there are some additional um, resources in here as well. But we're going to skip past tutorials and guides. We're going to skip past classroom strategies. And we are going to scroll down to grade bands. So I'm going to just show you this one small part. But um, if you wanted to pause the video now and explore now, this will be um, a great time to do that just so you can see what is available to you. But we are going to focus on grade bands. So once again, to get to grade bands from NC Ed Cloud, I did click on the resource toolkit. From the resource toolkit, I did click on the word educators. And then I scroll down to the bottom and click on grade bands. The two things that I will click on today when we are in this is I'm going to click on screenshots of all EBSCO Select Service pages and I'm going to also click on grade bands. So these two things highlighted in green are what I'm going to um, click on today. I'm going to click on screenshot of all EBSCO Select Service products. This will matter based on the group of students you work with. As an educator, I'm going to show you the professional group. And as an educator, this is what you see when you log in. You see almost, well, when they put it on pages, two full pages of icons. Um, your students do not see all of these icons. Um, they see what is relevant to them and what they can click on. You're going to see you have an Explorer K3, an Explorer 4, 5, an Explorer 6, 8, Explorer 9, 12. These are grade levels. Your student is only going to see Explorer once. And if they are in kindergarten through third grade, then that you click here to match what they see when they click on Explorer. If you are working with high school groups, um, they're going to see the Explorer, like I said, once like this. And then you just click on 912 and then your screen will look like theirs. They do not see the new publication finder interface. This is a way for you to search for information. They don't see this icon. So there's icons that you see that they don't see. Um, but that's why it's important to know what they do see. So I'm just going to click the arrow to go to the high school group. The high school group sees, um, I think it's 19 images here. Remember the Explorer, that picture I just showed you, they didn't see the different grade bands to pick from. You do. So when they click on 912 and you click, or excuse me, when they click on the new Explorer with projects and when you click on the new Explorer 912, then your screen will match theirs. So just make sure you click on the grade band that matches the group of children you're working with. Um, this is what the 9th through 12th graders see when they log in. This is what the 6th through 8th graders, they see 15 different icons when they log in. Remember, they see new Explorer with projects, but theirs is going to open to that 6th, 8th group. So you would have to make sure you click on the 6th, 8th group. Let's look at what 4th and 5th grade see. When 4th and 5th grade log in, they only have 7 icons. And then when kindergarten through 3rd grade log in, they only see 5 icons. And this is when they are logging into EBSCO. So it's important to know what your students see when they log in versus what you see when you log in. So just making sure you click, you're going to have to do a few clicks and then your screen should match theirs. Um, but like I said, you're going to have to open some icons first. So just being aware that if you're working with kindergarten through third grade, then you're going to tell them to click on the new Explorer with projects. And once again, remember, you're going to click on the new Explorer K3 and then your screens will match. So um, you have access to everything, but they don't. It is authenticated based on their grade level in NC Ed Cloud. Now, what I would do is I would make sure that um, I'm not into printing a lot of pages, but I would print this page that matches the students you work with. So if you work with fourth and fifth grade students, I would print this page. If you work with kindergarten through third grade, I would print this page just so you can be aware of the differences in your home screens when you open EBSCO. The other thing that I did want to show you from the toolkit, um, remember I went to the resource toolkit. Once I clicked on the resource toolkit, I clicked on educators. 
after I clicked on educators, I scrolled down to the bottom and I'm clicking in grade bands, just making sure you can access this um, later. I click on grade bands. Remember, once we get in grade bands, I'm going to look at these two things highlighted in green. So I'm going to look at the list of what databases they see. This will matter as we are searching. Um, so once you do get into those explorers and things of that nature, remember the new explorer, depending on the grade level your student's in depends on what databases are available. I want you to just pay attention to these few. Um, you can look at the others later. Primary search, um, and you can see this is at the top of every screen, but primary search is available for kindergarten up. You'll notice that they have checks in every box. That means anything that is found in a primary database is accessible to everyone. You'll see the middle search plus, and just because rather than scrolling all the way back, because here I can see this middle search, think middle school, but they do open that up to fourth and fifth graders. So if you have some um, elementary students who can handle the little bit higher reading level, then they can access that. While they can't access everything in middle school or can, it does allow them to have access to a few more resources. So think middle search kind of like middle school, but we do open that up to fourth and fifth grade. And then you're going to sit, you know, middle search does apply to middle school. So fourth and up can access the middle database. The MAS complete, that is accessible to sixth grade and up. Um, and then the master file is accessible to ninth grade and up. So those are the main databases we're going to see once we start looking for magazines and different types of publications. But being aware of what database they are found in will help you know if your students have access to those. Once again, I'm not big into printing a lot of pages, but I would probably print what I call my green check page so you know what your students can see when they log in. So I would make sure you know that. So if you wanted to pause and print that, take a look at any of that you can. There's a description at the bottom to what those databases are about if you wanted to learn more. But um, now would be a good time to pause the video. So if you want to research the toolkit, um, study those um, screenshots, or if you want to look at these databases, you can do that now. I am going to go ahead and get started. So that is the um, resource toolkit, and that is the link to the screenshots and the link to the spreadsheets. So what is EBSCO? Well, EBSCO um, includes ebooks, and there's encyclopedias, there's dictionaries, there's magazines, there's subject line reference centers for middle school and up, there's um, content, there's primary sources, there's educator resources. Anyway, it has access to a, a lot of digital content. Um, remember, once again, this was previously part of NCYSAL. Um, if you watched a Britannica video, um, but when it was in NCYSAL, it was not, um, what stu when students logged in, it did not match them up to grade level. And so therefore students may have um, had access to content they can't read, the lit files way above their level. So this does authenticate based on grade level and students' reading level to help make this um, more accessible to our students. So, um, and it also, the password has not been compromised, but every student who, to student educator who has access to NC and Cloud now has access to EBSCO. So that is why it is now housed here. Once you get into EBSCO, you are going to be able to personalize your learning. It's already personalized by grade level when students log in. Remember, they do see different things. We showed you that with the, um, the green check page and with the um, screenshots at each level. It does have the site your sources um, icon. Occasionally, you'll see the Google Classroom icon. Sometimes you don't. Um, sometimes you'll see Google Drive. Sometimes you don't. But you can search for HTML content, which HTML content allows you to change um, with Google Translate, allows it to read aloud for you, increase and decrease your font. You can also search for PDFs, um, but you can narrow down those databases. Now, when you are in EBSCO, do not share the URL with your learning management system. You're going to need to either create a permalink, you're going to need to either click the word share and then create a link. The URL does not always work. They are working on making the URL and the address bar always work, and they've got a couple of the databases fixed, but the majority of them are not. So they said their goal is to have it fixed by the end of this year, but um, I don't want frustration from where it sometimes works, but doesn't always. So the permalink and then clicking the share and create a, a link will always work. So let's go ahead and do that until EBSCO does make that transition over where the URLs will work. So making sure you're using this permalink. 
These are some things you might want to look on as you are searching for ebooks. So I'm going to show you how these platforms look and what they look like in each one. So I'm going to go ahead and start looking. And you'll notice that when we are here, I do say do not share URL. Share those permalinks only, just as a reminder. Now, remember, you don't have to share any links with your students. Your students can do all the searching on their own. But if you wanted to find the book ahead of time to um, place in your learning management system, you could. Um, one thing when we are in EBSCO is there is not a limit to the number of books that can be um, number of students who can open a book at the same time. It's unlimited. We get every student in the state reading the same book. It's not like a library where there's only five digital copies available. So this is unlimited resources. So we are going to go ahead and just start looking at some of the ebooks that are available um, in EBSCO. So from NC Ed Cloud, you're going to see EBSCO staff. Your students just see EBSCO. Remember, when I click, I'm going to see a lot of icons. Your students will not see as many icons. If you work with students in um, kindergarten through eighth grade, a database that they do have access to is Cricut Media Books. So I'm going to click on Cricut Media Books and show you how what this looks like. So once I click on Cricut Media Books, give it a second to load. You can type in the name of any book, the title of um, the subject of any book, or you know any book that you would like to. So maybe I want to learn about maybe the first day of school. So I'm just going to click on. Well, there's an actual book, so I'm just going to click on something. And so this is going to. Oh, well, I thought it was a book. Maybe it's not. Let's um, just type in first day of school. And I'm just going to click first day. So you're going to see that if there are books available, I'm going to see that they appear here in this list. So I can click on the title of this book. You'll see there's a little picture so you can click. If I click on the title of the book, if this book happened to be in a series, it would appear here. Um, and I could see all the books in that series. If you like this particular author, then you can click on their names and then a list of their names will become available. Then you can just read and learn a little bit more about the book. If you want to go ahead and access the book, you can click this. There's really no reason to download the books. Downloading the books takes up unnecessary space on your devices. You can slow them down, but you can always access this ebook now. I'm going to click this. Once this book opens, if this was a book with chapters, all the chapters would appear on the side. Um, I can click here. You can shrink the page if you need to to make it fit. In the bottom right hand corner, there's an increase in the decrease. Um, it does scroll down. Oh, let me increase, sorry, decrease as far as it would go. But you can scroll the page down. You can read this book aloud with your students. But you do have access to this entire book. Like I said, you would make it fit the page that you're working on. Um, to share this book with your students, in the upper right hand corner, you're going to look for that arrow. You're going to click share, and then you're going to create this link. And then just copy that and you can paste that in your learning management system. Once again, you don't have to share any links. You can just tell your students to search for the chicken licking rides the bus. So you could um, just share this title with them or you could share the author with them and they could look it up on their own. If you were, um, maybe I wasn't looking at this book, I was researching a book. Maybe we were doing a research project in class. You will see that when you're on the page of a book, you can click the word cite. And then it does default to this Brazilian national standards, but you could change this and you could go to MLA and then you could just copy paste or you could just copy the clipboard and then it'll copy that citation for you. And you could save that book for your students. Um, you could print if you wanted to, but um, just be aware, you know, it will try to, you can custom print. It will only print 100 pages at a time if it was a book that had more than 100 pages, but your students do have access to this at all times. Um, I'm going to go back and I'm going to, um, go, you can search for any title. So think of any subject you want to learn about. Think of anything of interest to you and you can type that here. Okay, I am going to close that tab. I'm going to go back to EBSCO staff. I am now going to go to ebooks all. Um, in ebooks all, you're going to see all of the ebooks that you as an educator have access to. I'm going to click on all databases. 
and you're going to see these are all the databases that would have ebooks. So I'm going to check um, all to deselect because they're automatically defaulted. And if you are a high school, um, per, if you work with high school, I would just check the high school collection. If you are work with students in um, K-8, I would check the K-8 collection. So I would just choose a collection that matches the students you are working with. Um, just being aware that if you click the high school collection, remember um, students in elementary or middle school can't access that. That would make sure you're looking for a collection they can have. So this ebook K-8 collection will allow you to have some access to some fiction books, um, nonfiction books, a variety of content whereas if you were looking for like the biography reference book remember this is just going to be books about people but you do have access to these additional databases but right now either click if you're a high school person click the high school collection if you're an elementary middle person click the k-8 collection and then after you choose your collection click search you want to see now that i'm searching this k-8 ebook collection so what EBSCO does is EBSCO is an aggregator and they work with different publishing companies and they work with these publishing companies and Cricut happened to be one of those publishing companies where you just saw that last video. And these publishing companies give access to certain books. I will tell you they are not giving us access to the most popular books because those are the books they make their big money on. So just be aware that the most popular books might not be in here. Um, just type a book that you know you have looked at with your students. So I know Hatchet has always been, or not always, but many years been a Battle of the Books book. I know that um, I've used it when I work with my students. Now, the Hatchet book is not in here, but there are books that would go along with those popular books. So this is an entire literature kit that goes along with Hatchet. I'm going to click on the title. And I can remember, I told you once you click on the title, if it's part of the series, you'll see it. So there's a whole series called Literature Kit. So if you like it, um, you do have access to more. I can see that this book is written by two people. Um, Gary Paulson, who is the author of Hatchet, actually helped write this literature kit. So this is probably a very good resource since the author of the original book um, helped with this. And then you can also see books that are written by Sarah um, Hubert. I would think it's how you would say that. But I can access this um ebook now and once I get in this ebook if the remember if I add chapters I will see them on the right I can see that there's a teacher's guide and um, I can see teaching strategies or summary of the story um, you'll see that there's vocabulary that goes along with every chapter there's did you know there's um, chapter questions that go along with every chapter and then you'll see that there's word searches that are going to help you with that vocabulary but you're also going to see that there is an answer key. Now, I found this in the K-8 collection. So what does that mean? That means your students can also find this if they are in the K-8 collection. So if this is a resource you want to use with your students. If your students are just reading to help their own comprehension, their own understanding, that's fine to link them to that. However, if they are using, or if you want to use this in your class for grades, I would not tell them where you got it from. Just being aware um, that this, um, that's the way this particular one works because if it's in the K-8 collection, if you can see it, they can see it. As you'll see, there's actually some um, graphic organizers that you can use with your students. But being aware that the most popular books might not be in here, but resources to go along with those about the authors, biographies, you may find those in here. So I had already shown you that if that book was in a series and you like this, and maybe this is something you like for your class and you want to use this, then you'll see that there is a literature um, kit series. So then I have a list of all of these literature kits that are um, in this collection, and I can see the rest of these. So don't be afraid to check out the series or even check out the author if you like the way um, these books are written and this is something you think you can use with your um, students or you can use to um, enhance your teaching. Um, once again, if you were in the high school group, just type in a popular book that you've read with your students if the book is not here. Now, some of the literature classics or the classics are in here, but you can also find, you know, about the, the author or you can find literature kits or just additional information to go along with those books. So this would be a great time to go and look for those books. If it is a book you do want to share with your students, um, remember you can do access now. And then you can click this share or little send out at the top. And that's going to allow you to create that link and share that link with your students. So 
So if you wanted to go ahead and share a book with your students, like I said, you might not want to share this one because it has an answer key, but any of the books that you can find, you can click that little send out button. And since I shared the link from this screen, this is the screen that this is going to open my students up to. It's going to open up to this particular screen. On the screen previous to this, if I were to share this link with my students, then they're going to be able to see the series and they're going to be able to see the authors. So if you share the link from this page, this is the um, what they're going to be able to see as well. So just being aware of what you are sending. And you'll see here, when I share from this, I do have that Google Classroom and Google Drive integration. However, that does not always appear. And there's even OneDrive integration here as well. So just being aware that you do get different options depending on where you share. This will be a good time for you to search in those particular databases. So remember, if you are in high school, you're searching in the high school database, or if you wanted to search any of those um, other, let me get back here. So when I go back to NCA Cloud and I go back to eBooks All, remember you have 13 databases. If you wanted to look at the Biography Reference Center, remember go look at that green check page and see what grade levels have access to that. If you wanted to share, um, search from the Literary, Literary Reference Center, look and see what grade levels have access to that. So only search for the ones that are matching the students that you are working with now. One thing I did want to point out from that K-8 collection, um, when you are looking at the green check page, hold on, I'm going to come here just so I don't have to do all that searching. Go to this spreadsheet. Um, EBSCO is currently working to separate the K-8 collection because there are some books that are harder for our younger learners to read. So right now in the Cricut book, collection anyone can open so you'll, oh, excuse me kindergarten through eighth grade but in the k-8 collection you'll see that there's some words here via link sharing only four and five can search it easily six and six and eight can search it easily but then you're going to notice that it says link sharing only for kindergarten through third grade so until ebsco has a chance to separate the books and to make it applicable for the students in our younger grades an educator, as a teacher, you can find a book and you can share the link with your students. So if you have students in kindergarten through third grade, they cannot search that K-8 elementary collection, but they can read any book you share the link with them for. They just can't search on their own. They can search the Cricut Media books. Um, EBSCO, like I said, they are working this year on separating that K-8 collection to have elementary and middle school collection, but that has just not happened yet. So in the meantime, if you as an educator want to find a book from that collection and share with them, they can open, but they cannot search on their own. Just make sure you're aware that that is one difference with that K-8 collection. So at this time, if you want to pause, search any of those um, ebook collections. And remember, as you are searching, um, we're going to look in how you can find ebooks in Explore and Explore Host. But right now, if you're searching the Cricut Media eBooks, the K-8 collection, the high school collection, maybe even those reference centers if, or even the biography center, you can search any of those collections. And as you are searching, um, be aware that you might not find those particular books, but there's also full text classic literature kits, literacy reviews about the authors. You may find, I think there's a series called Literature Study and Teaching. There's um, biographies, ebooks in the reference centers, ebooks in the educator collection. So don't be afraid to look at those sites as you are looking. So if you want to pause the video and look now, now would be a good time to do that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and show you as well. So you'll notice a lot of times I go back to this main screen because I think it's helpful for you to see where I'm clicking. So I'm going to EBSCO staff. And this time from EBSCO staff, I am going to click and explore a database. So base, click the one that matches the group of students you work with. So if you work with K3, click this one. If you work with 4-5, click here. If you work with 6-8, click here. I'm going to just um, choose No Explorer 912 just because I haven't searched a high school collection. Once we get in, the searches will be very similar. The pictures will be different, but the searches will be the same. So just pick the one that matches your grade level. And just remember, your students don't have a choice. They're just going to automatically open to the grade level that they're in. So I'm just going to choose New Explorer 912, just so I can um, model what might be in the high school group. 
And once we get in, this is going to look very similar to when we were in that Britannica page. And you're going to see, um, if you know what you want to look for, I would definitely just search. This is a dynamic page. These pages do update about every month. So um, based on something that might be relevant at the time, you're going to see that this, this picture does change. And when I refresh my page, it will change for me as well. So if I refresh a couple of times, it is going to change as we move on. So just be aware your student screen might not look exactly like yours. It doesn't mean they're on the wrong page. And just to make sure you know where you're supposed to be, you see 912. So you'll see whatever grade level you're working with at the top. If you know what you want to search for, I would definitely recommend just typing it in the search box, but maybe you don't know and you just have some time and give your students a chance to explore. You'll see that you do have icons that you can click. Maybe I want to click on geography. Just click any tile that's of relevance to you. No matter what grade level you're in, you'll see tiles. So I'm going to click geography. I'm going to see that this is going to narrow this down. I've got buildings, places, cities. Anyway, if you keep clicking tiles until there's no more, there's no other ways to narrow it down. I'm going to click continents and oceans, and then I'm going to click continents. Um, then you're going to see here that I have some little subtopics here. Um, they call these like look like a pill list. Maybe I want to learn about Australia. This is going to help me narrow this down even more. And once you've narrowed it down as far as you can go, if there are ebooks here, you're going to see them. Um, but I can, and then there may be some books and titles that you can click on. This is like going to that section of the media center of the library and you see these ideas. But you can also click view all results. And this is going to give you a list of all resources that are in these. Well, since I'm in high school, there's 27 databases. Remember, databases change based on grade level. Remember, elementary will not have as many databases to pull from. But I can see that I'm pulling from all of these resources because I am in the high school group. So um, just making sure you're aware that that's going to look different based on your grade level. Um, if you wanted to, since we were talking about ebooks, if I click the word all filters, this little box is going to open up on the side. Um, sometimes in high school, you do have to have peer reviewed articles. That is an option you can choose. But I can choose the. Um, source types and this is where you can narrow it down if you just want to look for those ebooks you can look for those ebooks if you just wanted to look for magazine articles you can do that because magazines will be the next thing we look for but i'm just going to click on ebooks or if you want to look for primary source documents you can narrow it down that way as well so i'm just going to click ebooks i'm going to apply that filter um you do have the option to narrow it down by lexile if you wanted to or you can even narrow it down if you know the publisher co publication company, you can do that as well. You apply any filters that you would like. So now I'm just looking at ebooks, and just like before, if you type, click on the title, if that is part of a series, you will see it. It is part of a series called Continents. You can also see books by that author. You can see that this does have a table of contents. There's a description here. You can even see Luxile on this page if it's if it is a book that has been um filter by Lexile. Um, remember, I really wouldn't download because that just bogs down your device, makes your device lowers more content, but you can access this ebook now. Once again, once you get into the book, those things that I've shown you before, you have the um, share icon, which will allow you to create that link, which is what you would want to share with your students if you wanted to share the book with them ahead of time. If they needed to cite that book, remember they do have the option to cite. Um, it does default to that Brazilian um, option, but you can change it to MLA if you wanted to. Copy that to your clipboard, and now that you can cite the source if you're doing research. Um, if you book or save the item, this only applies to those people who have created an account. Um, high school students like 13 and up can create accounts, but elementary and middle only with parental permission or as you acting on behalf of them, but there's really no need to create an account and just unless you just want them to bookmark and save things because um, they can always get back to these resources for later. So it's not like they're going to disappear if you don't save the item. Um, but remember, um, your district depends on who can have access and who can create those accounts. But it's not recommended for students, um, younger students without parental permission. Um, so once you share this, remember you can navigate by the table of contents. Um, on the right, so if there's different chapters, you can get to those chapters and you can read those books that book with your students. So you will find that when you are in the Explora 
and you can search for these and you can help narrow down that search remember based on your databases um, once you are searching so please pause the video and take time to look in the Explorer based on the grade that matches the group of students you are working with and you don't have to search just for ebooks this session was on ebooks we'll use I'll search for different things later but um, and then when you're ready to come back I'll show you how to find magazines so if you would like to search please do so now and then I will show you how to find magazines Okay, welcome back. So um, EBSCO, like I said, is an aggregator and they do work all of, with all of these different publishing companies. One publisher that they do work with is Scholastic. So if you've been spending a lot of money for Scholastic magazines, we do have access to those. Now be aware, if you do have a school subscription to Scholastic and when you go to the site, there's your interactive games and the videos and things of that nature, we do not have that with like having the actual magazine in your hand. So we don't have access to those additional games and things of that nature. Um, these are some additional publications. As people ask me if I find them, I'll do put them in here. So there's like Science Teacher, School Library Journal, Teacher Librarian, U.S. News and World Report, Highlights for Children. Anyway, these are just a few of the magazines. So you can search for any magazine that is of interest to you. Um, I was doing some sessions this summer and we had some um, teachers who taught foreign languages and they were able to find magazines in foreign languages so um can't remember the names but if once again if that applies to you please feel free to check that um this is where it matters the database so remember the green check page so i'm going to show you how to find these resources so we are going to go to back to nc ed cloud this is where we're going to start from nc ed cloud if you will click ebsco staff And then I'm going to click on the new publication finder interface, the new publication finder interface. Once I click on the new publication finder interface, you're going to see it opens up to this box and this is where I can type. So I'm going to search for Scholastic just, and you can search for any magazine that you want. Um, I'm just going to search for Junior Scholastic just because it pops up. And I'm going to see that I have access to Junior Scholastic in these different databases. It's in the middle search, primary search, history, master file, and science. Remember, middle search was fourth grade and up. Primary search was kindergarten and up. History, I think, was sixth grade and up. Master file was just high school. And science, I believe, was six and up. So make sure when you choose a database that matches that green check page. So I know everybody can see primary. So I'm just going to click primary search. Once I click primary search, it's going to open up this particular database. Um, I can see over here that I have um, access to full text from looks like January of 98 to present. But I have the um, bibliographic records, which is just like an abstract from 1989 to present as well. So I don't have access to about 10 years of the um, research or of these magazines. But if you have access on the far right, you'll see you have years. You can click the plus to expand that year. Then I can see all issues that have been shared so far and I'm going to click. Now, this is going to show me this particular magazine, and I can see it in HTML full text or PDF full text. HTML full text does not have all the icons or the pretty pictures, um, but it does have, give me just a second. That is not the PDF, that is not the full text, it is just an abstract. So I'm going to go back to this for just a second. So I have the PDF full text. So once I click on the PDF full text, you're going to see that I do have the, um, it's given to me a magazine at a time. So I have this article, or not a magazine, an article at a time. I have this article. I have this article. So you can see I can navigate the articles on the side. So I do have access to these articles. You can see over here on the right, you do have the option to send this to Google Classroom if you use Google Classroom. Um, it's on the far right and it's teeny tiny in the upper right hand corner. However, if you don't use Google Classroom, on the far right on the bottom, you'll see that little link. And then you can make that permalink appear at the top. So if you look up here at the top, once you create link, it's going to do a permalink. It's going to send you to this article. 
Now, since I can navigate the contents on the left, your students can also navigate the contents on the left. So you only share one article with them, but then they can maneuver and they can go up and down and see the different articles. So that is something that your students can do as they are sharing this. So like this is how it's having the magazine um, with your students. Occasionally you will see a magazine that may have come out horizontally and you may need to just flip the pages so you can just rotate if you need to. I've seen that happen a few times where the magazine is sideways. So if you ever see a magazine that's sideways, you can just rotate your pages. Um, so that is something that you can do with this. And then let's go look. From this screen, you can navigate to the HTML full text. I'm not certain why it didn't open on the other screen. But from here, the HTML full text, it is not as pretty. Obviously, it doesn't have the pictures. It's, but from here, I can change the language. So for your students who might not be English speakers yet, this is a great place to change that language. And it does have the option to um, read aloud for you. And then if your students have trouble reading, click on those three lines. Don't ever be afraid to click on the three dots or click on the three lines. You'll see that you also have this page mask. So I can narrow this down and focus on one section at a time to help my students read who may have trouble staying on track. So you do have that option when you're in the HTML full text. I'm just going to cut the page mask off. But don't be afraid to check on the lines. And if the students do need to have this read aloud, they can change the reading voice to help them with that. So know that this is aware for them, uh, available for them, but the HTML full text looks like actually having the magazine in their hands. So you can see that. Now, you won't always have every magazine um, in both platforms. Sometimes the magazine is just found in um, HTML full text. So if it is a magazine that is famous for its pictures and you want your students to see those pictures, then I would um, look at this and see the platform that it comes in before you tell your school not to not to buy it, just to make sure it's in the correct platform that you need. Okay, I'm going to go back to Publication Finder. So as you search for any type of magazine, the key here is knowing those databases and remembering that green check page and making sure you find a magazine that your students can see. So um, then once you find one, you can share that link with them. Once again, let's see, let me come back up here and let me check um, U.S. News and World Reports because I know this is in here. And remember, you can see these databases. So I know that if this is master file, this is for my high school students. So I'm going to click that master file. Remember, if we have it over here, um, you can see that I do have the full text. And this might be important. Remember, bibliographic records is just that description. The full text is what you're looking for. And you can see the publisher over here as well if you'd like. But um, I can come over here, open that magazine, find access to the different years. And then this one does come in HTML and PDF full text. But being aware that it does not always. Some books are just HTML. Some are just PDF. But knowing what you do have access to. So once you click here. And once I do share this link with students, and maybe I wanted to share this particular um, article with my students, if I get the link from this page, they can come over here and they can choose another issue on their own. So what you see on this page when you share is what they're going to see. So can they choose another issue? And you'll see it'll open the years. Um, you can get more if you need to, but... Um, and so I can click on years, or they can, and then they can access additional um, magazines. So they're not going to see that page that you saw with the databases. They are not going to see this page. But they will be able to navigate this way once you share it with them once. So just be aware that once you share, they do have access to other magazines that they have played around with the page and explored and seen what is available to them. So that is where you're going to find magazines. And so um, as you are searching, just know that you can search this. Um, in addition, if you just want to search books that you know that you're, um, let's see, let me just refresh this page. And maybe you don't know what magazines are available and maybe you've never ordered magazines for your classroom and you don't know where to start. One thing you can do from the new publication finder interface, remember I am in um, EBSCO staff. I am in the New Explorer Publication Finder, and I can search databases. I can just browse databases. I'm going to click Browse Databases, 
And remember, primary is anyone, middle school is um, fourth and up. So just remember that green check page I showed you. So maybe I want to look for magazines that anybody can access. So I'm going to click Browse Databases. And I'm going to click Primary Search. And I'm going to narrow this down to journals. I just want to know what journals um, that we have access to. And then a list of journals. There's like 103 that are going to appear. You'll see there's Appleseed, there's Ask. There's Boys Quest, Boys Life, um, Child's Life, um, Clifford the Bed Red Dog, Cricket. Anyway, um, you'll have access to these different types. You can just go to the next page. This is if you don't know and you're just interested in seeing what's here. Um, fun for kids. But if you see one that is of interest to you, remember, look at how it's shared. So I've not clicked on Fun for Kids before. I'm just going to click it. Um, once I get here, I can I know it's in the primary search because that was the database I narrowed it down to to search to begin with. So I'm just going to click this little um, arrow. My years are going to appear and let's just see what this looks like. So once I click, I can see that it's in PDF full text. It's in HTML. So let's just click on PDF full text and see what that looks like. And so then I have this um, magazine that I have not thought to look for before. I'd never heard of that. And then I can see it in PDF full text, and then I can see it in HTML full text. So, and there's not a lot here. It's short, but that is some another way to search for magazines that maybe you had not thought about by using those databases. So, please take the time to use a new Explorer. Um, excuse me, make sure I say it right. The Publication Finder interface, and just look for magazines that you might want to use with your students. You maybe you just find stuff you didn't realize. Um, so I am going to go ahead and wrap this up. So if you would like to be a part of my email list, I know this was a very quick overview of how to find some ebooks and how to find some magazines. But if you would like to be part of our um, email list where I'll share out product updates, I'll make announcements. Um, there's webinars that I'll be offering throughout the school year, some best practices and more. Please fill out this form. Remember, this is found at the end of this bit.ly, bit.ly, slash NC Bold number one, D Curry 2023. NC Bold does have to be in all caps. Fill out this form and I'll get you added to the mailing list and you'll get updated about the webinars that are going to be coming up um, this school year. But thank you so much for joining me and I hope you um, find it useful to have access to these resources. If you do have any questions, my contact information was up here at the very top. So my name is Donna.curry at dpi.nc.gov. And thank you again.